Hello ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, guess what happened when I loaded up Dark Gears again? I shouldn't forget my ID and torch. I know, it speaks. And welcome to Overanalyze Adventures, and welcome again to the continued overanalysis of Dark Gears, an Iranian made adventure game that frankly isn't good on any level. So picking up where we left off, we played as some newspaper reporter who wanted some precious information that cost 20,000 pounds. Then he went into a house and it exploded and I think now he's in jail. Anyway, we're now a different protagonist. That's right. There's two different playable characters and he's a detective in Iran. Although it's pretty difficult to tell this at first because the game really doesn't put any effort into telling you where you are or who you are. There's not even like a text pop up. Really, you're just... Suddenly this guy, in this house, and you're trying to find his badge and his torch. The police badge should always be with me. I'll take it. Believe it or not, this is some of the best voice acting this game has to offer. I'm not joking here. Savor this. This is as good as it gets. My torch. I'll take it. Ah, no, it's really obvious that the character is not even close to touching that torch despite absorbing it somehow through his body. And yeah, sure, it's really noticeable that this character model breaks as he bends, but these are all minor grievances compared to what we're in store for. Well, my old friend, come, we have a new adventure. Yeah, it's really obvious no effort was put into actually having the character grasp at anything. He just motions and then things fade out of existence. And don't get too excited about having a gun. You don't get to use it as an object. There is a mandatory combat sequence in this game, and yeah, we'll get to that. But for the most part, the gun just doesn't really matter. It doesn't really exist. It's not an inventory item. It's just something he has, and I'm pretty sure if you don't pick it up, it doesn't really matter. So mission accomplished. This fellow right here, he has his badge. He has his torch, or flashlight, as we say in America. Because a torch is what you line the temple wall with in Indiana Jones, and a flashlight is what you take with you when you hear that weird noise in the back of your house. Yeah, I feel like I need to reiterate this probably with every episode. The controls are awful. The camera's awful. It's just a pain to navigate this world. This'll help, but how do I open it? I have no idea what that object was I just picked up. The camera was pretty much blocking any of my view, and then eventually I was prompted to pick something up, so I picked it up, because this is an adventure game, and that's what you do. You pick up anything that isn't nailed down. But nevertheless, I eventually made my way to the bottom of the apartment building, I'm assuming. Where has this dog come from? I think it must be hungry. I'm not exactly sure how they make dogs in Iran, but where I'm from, this is what we call a wolf. And seriously, this dog and the air quotes you can't see I'm making made this sound. I don't know what to make of any of this. All that I know is that I need to feed it, apparently, so I can leave my apartment. Although, it would make more sense to shoot it with a silver bullet, but whatever. We gotta feed the damn thing. And it turns out that random object I picked up on the floor was dog food. How convenient. The only object I find walking around aimlessly is the one object I need. What are the odds? Now all I need to do is walk back up to my kitchen and use a can opener on the dog food and then, well, give it to Fido. With that angry dog there, it's not safe to go out. I seriously thought the game broke here because nothing seemed to have happened. It's not like there was any animation, any indication that I fed the dog or even attempted to. But yeah, apparently I did somehow. I guess this dude has some sort of psychic powers that allowed him to teleport the can from his jacket to the dog. And then the dog just phase shifted out of existence. The dog ate it all and left. Now I can go out easily. Sir, considering how giant you are, I doubt you're going to pass through that door easily at all. Just look at it. Yeah, this is another weird thing about this game. The perspectives are really weird. Proportions of objects and character models just seem slightly off all the time. And here's another weird thing too. This character always has a red mark on his neck. It's like a sniper's constantly keeping a bead on him. I don't know. Perhaps that's how they got the artist to do the character models for this game. But hey, whatever. We escaped the apartment building. Now we can do... I, I don't know what we're going to do. I seriously have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to hope something happens. 
Because again, and I'm serious here, the game doesn't really tell you anything. I guess in that one cut scene where he was talking to the other dude on the phone, maybe I could have gleaned... No, I couldn't have gleaned any information off of that. One, it made no sense. And two, they just talked about stuff. Not about what I should do as this character. So yeah, I'm pretty much adrift here. Alright, well, I'm here... And this exterior does not in any way, shape, or form match the exterior of what I was looking at through the window on the door at all. Well, okay, let's just roll with it. We outside now, somewhere. Perhaps during the loading screen, he walked around to a completely different area. Oh! We seem to have a car now. Huh. Well, right, I guess I'll go somewhere in it. Where? I don't know. Yeah, in case you can't notice, the door didn't shut. <laughs> the... I can't make this up. It's not like I'm actively seeking out this stuff. It just... It just happened. First time I get in the car. Door doesn't shut. And as for how the car handles, frankly... It handles better than any of the characters. But then again, considering the characters handle so badly that the game's almost unplayable, it's really not saying much of anything. But hey, on the plus side, at least the camera actually isn't terrible for this part of the game. It's like they just built the camera for the driving sequences and just left it be. Because that's how you design a game. Very well. I just, I can't make this up. Yeah, you can just run over people with little to no consequence. Actually, there is no consequence at all, except maybe on your conscious for killing virtual characters. But then again, they exist in the world of dark years, so it's probably a mercy killing. So, with no idea of where I should go or why I should go anywhere, I just drove around. And soaked in the sights of uh, maybe Tehran? Somewhere in Iran. Maybe it's England. I don't know. But hey, let's look at the wonderful sights here. Such as this building that's oddly bright compared to everything else around it. Is it made out of some translucent paint? I don't know. What I also don't know is why it's shaking so much. Just wow. This is a hot tourist attraction in case you can't tell. Actually, it turns out there's quite a few of them. I guess everyone wants to copycat that house after how successful it was as a tourist trap. So after a while of just driving around, which was... Probably one of the more pleasant experiences in this game. I found a marker on my map that indicated the police. And I was like, hey, I'm a cop. Maybe I should be here. So yeah, I guess this is the police station. It just looks like a generic bit of textures. And since there was no button prompt in the middle of my screen, I knew I couldn't do anything here. Because that's how this game works. If you're not prompted to do something, you don't do anything. So I carried on my pointless driving around. Pointless, pointless driving around. And then eventually I saw a weird kind of glowing thing in the distance. And I figured that's probably where I should go. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's watch that one more time. I don't know how they let this slip. It's not like I'm going off the beaten track. I'm right beside where I'm supposed to be. It's not like I was trying to do anything cute here. I was like, oh, here's a glowing thing. There's a set of doors right beside it. I'll just walk through these doors and oh, I quite literally walk through the doors and I'm in a hollow shell that this building is. How could any tester let this slip by? Again, you have to be here. It's just, no. I don't think there was any testers for this game now, because how else can you explain this? How could nobody not notice this? It's amazing. It really is. I just, I don't know what to say sometimes. This thing just speaks for itself. So after being dumbfounded and godsmacked and whatever old timey word you want to use for what the hell am I watching, I pressed E to interact with the glowing thing. And oh, there's a loading screen, so I've made some progress. So I'm guessing here that I'm inside the building I walked through. But we already know what was inside of that building. Nothing. But here there's something. What? I don't know yet. I just am here. Again, this game really does not bother to tell you anything. Which is really strange because it's super linear. But I guess that's to its advantage because if it wasn't so linear, it would be borderline impossible to play. Hello, Savipur. Hi, sir. It is good that that came soon. 
yeah, this voice actor, to put it graciously, sounds like a text-to-speak program. When did it happen? Last night, Mohammed Masood stayed in his office to print an important article. He was there till midnight, and then he was attacked and murdered. Who found the body? The caretaker of the printing office found the body and reported at once. What have you found? I search everywhere, but no clues. Just one point. The murderer must have used a silencer, as no neighbor, passerby, or even the caretaker has heard any shooting. The absurdity of all of this is like performance art. Our character's just doing whatever he's doing over there. Regardless of whether he's speaking or not, he's going through the same animation loop. And this dude we're listening to, he's a text-to-speak program. And he's just pouring information down our throat. There was a dude, he was murdered here. No one knows anything. Investigate. End program. Thanks. I'll have a look at the crime scene. Okay, sir. So, yeah, you heard what he said, right? Could you make a whole lot of sense out of it? And this is a serious question. Because all I could get from that is a dude was murdered and someone used a silencer. So I guess we're going to investigate the body that's right next to us. That some doctor dude is just, what, laying the hands upon him? He's not even touching the body. How do you not notice these things? I know animation is difficult, but for the love of God, if you're going to make a game, learn something in Blender beforehand. What information do you have for me? Oh, and just so you know, there's no way to lower the music volume or to turn it off in this game, so yeah, the sound balancing needed some work. Detective, I found out the murder was committed at about 2 a.m. Oh, and here's another delightful thing about this game. It just randomly goes to weird camera angles all the time. Like, this one's kind of aesthetically interesting, but sometimes a camera angle is just a pillar. The bullet has hit the heart and killed him at once. Oh, alright, so that's all the information we needed right there, I guess. Well, alright, now what do I do? I guess I'll speak to this random lady who's just hanging out here in the corner. Hello, I'm Detective Afshar. Can I ask you some questions about Mr. Masood? Hello, Detective. She sounds a bit like a guy trying to put on a woman's voice, or just a very unenthusiastic lady voice actor. I couldn't decide for myself, so I'm gonna go with both. You're welcome. Anything I can do? When did he usually come to and leave work? Well, he was used to stay late in the office to get the articles ready for the next day's printing. You know, today man is an evening daily. Did you also stay here late last night? Yes, I stayed. Did you hear any shooting? No, sir. Unfortunately, I didn't hear anything. Okay, can I have a look at Mr. Masu's office? Sure, sir. Here you are. You know, even in super slow-mo, it doesn't work. This is the key to his room. Thanks. So after that, you guessed it, that wandered aimlessly about, waiting for some interaction prompt to flash up on the screen. And sure enough, it did, at just the right moment. Yeah, that's gonna be the title card for this episode. This is a good clue. I'll show it to the doctor. In case you couldn't hear, see, or even notice what just happened there, we found a bullet casing and we're gonna show it to the doctor. And no, I'm not trying to be condescending. I was in the same boat as I was playing this. What do you think about the gun that shot this shell? The shell seems to belong to a 1.5 caliber pistol. I will give you more information. By tomorrow, Detective Afshar. While I'm no gun expert or enthusiast, I'm pretty sure that 1.5 caliber pistol does not exist, nor ever has. I could be wrong, though. Why couldn't they go with a good old-fashioned 45? Maybe it's some weird metric thing that I'm unaware of. You know, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, everyone between, I just hit the spacebar and pause the video at just the right time. It's never intentional, but sometimes a really funny image is created. And here's one of them. My word. Those two guys right there. <laughs> oh, boys will be boys, am I right? Thank you, Doctor. Alright, so we're done with the Doctor and he's given us a happy ending. So let's head off to the office and do some investigation. Because all we know right now is a dude was shot and we investigating it. Oh right, despite the fact that this looks like an intricate and important crime scene, there's nothing really in here other than one puzzle. 
Yeah, that blood on the floor besides the lamp. Nope, we can't interact with it. Our character doesn't even want to talk about it. And oh yeah, there's a bloody handprint on the wall over here. It's just there to be there. Obviously, no detective would be interested in any of this information. Perhaps because it kind of contradicted what the doctor told us. He said, dude was shot in the heart and just died instantly. But there's clearly a lot of blood everywhere and a bloody handprint. Was this the attacker? Did he move the body? Was this the victim? There seems to be a lot of loose ends here, but hey, we don't care. Oh. Considering that Masood wasn't a member of the Tudor party, it's interesting to see these here. See what? Where? Game, you could bother to flash the image up on the screen so I can take a look at it. Even up close, it doesn't make much sense. But I do know what the Tula Party was. It was an Iranian Communist Party, and it was a big reason why Britain and America, in particular America, got involved with Iranian affairs because of, well, the Cold War, and they believe the Soviet Union spread of communism. It's a bit complicated. But oh yeah, I should stop being a tease. Let's check out this puzzle. Yeah, it's incredibly lame. It's navigate the ball to the red dot. And God forbid you fall in the holes. I don't know how you can fall in the holes unless you're just purposely trying to fall into the holes. Because it really is just use waz to move it. No, I didn't edit anything out. It just ended. Did I get an item? I don't know. Did I achieve something? Again, I'm clueless here. So after solving that very hard puzzle, I just did what I always do in this game. I just wandered about again. That's what you do a lot in this game. Just wander about. And then eventually bump into something you need to do. Like, talk to this guy downstairs. Apparently, I needed to do that. I thought I was investigating a crime scene, but whatever, doesn't matter. Just go with the flow. Zabipu, please check the system inside for any possible clues. Yes, sir. Okay, so you solve a weird maze puzzle, which naturally and logically leads to you ask Mr. Tex to speak to check out the other room. Makes perfect logical sense on every front. But first, let's loot this body, because there's an important item on it, apparently. Now, I'll take it and open the drawer. Now, I know this because when I walked past it, I was prompted to do something with it. But that should go without say by this point, and it will go without say. Just allow me to reiterate this for the last and final time. I know that's redundant. To do anything in this game, you must be prompted to do it. A button must flash before you on your screen. Otherwise, you can't do anything. So, a good chunk of this game is just walking around, trying to rub up on everything, with the hope that you're prompted to do something. None of it's intuitive, and none of it makes any sense. But you have to do it if you're going to make any headway in dark years. All right, let's use that key on that drawer, apparently. Because that's the thing we need to do. Wonderful that the detective told us at that one point in the game. There's a hole in this drawer. I must find something to fill it. And how exactly does that prevent you from opening the drawer? How does having a hole in the drawer prevent you from opening it? But it doesn't matter. Because we have that weird ball that we got from that puzzle. And we put it in the drawer somehow. And plug a hole. And that... None of this makes sense, does it? Now I understand why he had these here. These are documents on the high-ranking official's corruption. Yeah, I don't know why the voice actor didn't feel like saying that line. So these documents prove some sort of corruption. Wonderful. And that's why the newsman was killed, because he was about to expose it. Again, wonderful. We have something resembling a plot now. And good luck trying to make heads or tails out of any of these documents. It's written in terribly translated English, and it just flat out doesn't make any sense. But hey, let's go talk to Mr. Tex to speak, and, well... Get out of here. Good job, officer. Do you have Masood's address? I'm wondering, what did he do that was such a good job? Just stand around there? Thank you, sir. I will find it for you. Okay, so I'll go get some rest. See you at the office. Alright, so yeah, apparently it's gonna take some time to get the address. Well, as I said, let's jet out of here. I figured I should go home. So, again, I drove around and found my way home. Or to this guy's house. Every time I get in this apartment and I look out through the window on that door, I realize it is not the same place as when you're driving there. It just, it doesn't match up. Continuity errors, basic things, game makers. Just stop. Don't have windows. Don't. If you're going to do that, no.
Awful sound design. Awful sound design. Mm, yeah, baby, let me just phase through this armrest right here because I want to talk to you about something. I don't know who you are or why you're in my house, but I won't talk to you. Hi, where have you been? Another big event in your life? Don't start again. You're just getting back to normal life. Don't bother yourself with such thoughts. The most organic conversation I've ever heard in a video game. Just wow. What do you mean? You've forgotten all your responsibilities for my problems? So is he the one responsible for your head becoming a light source? Because if he is, he really should apologize for it. If you mean that crash, please stop it. Because it wasn't my fault and you know it. I don't know anything. I don't know who this lady is. I don't know your backstory. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Come on, fill me in, game. Yes, it was your fault. If you thought of me and the baby in my womb, instead of worrying about all the crime around you, there wouldn't have been an accident. And I could hug my baby right now. But I'm doomed forever. Longing to... Okay, okay. You're right. As the subtitles clearly show, she had more to say. But, okay... This dude's responsible for her becoming sterile somehow and killing her baby because he was worrying about all the crime around him. Okay, and all this ties into a dude who was killed because he was about to expose corruption. All right, we're all on the same page now. Now what should I do? Let a murderer move around the city freely and I sit here doing nothing. Now, I'm not entirely sure what murderer he's referring to here. Is he talking about the guy who killed the newspaper man? Or is he just talking about a generic Jack the Ripper type running around Iran? Damn this life. Oh, hello, camera. So good of you to spin back into me. Now, from this point, I once again had no idea what I was supposed to do. Could you really decipher any idea, any notion, any hint at what you were supposed to do after experiencing that delightful conversation? So yeah, I just wandered around the house and eventually I found a little puzzle thing that I pieced together. It was a note in broken English. It seems my wife has an appointment with the psychiatrist tomorrow. Your wife? You mean the lady that you were talking to? I assume that's what he mean. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That intro for the very first episode. Was she the one getting shot? Was she the one I thought was dead? Did instead the gunman just kill her baby? All right. I'm guessing that's what went down. I mean, it makes sense. It was in the intro and now they're talking about a bad event and a baby dying. So that's what I'm going with. So after that interesting revelation, I discovered that by piecing together that letter that was destroyed for reasons I do not understand, another letter faded into existence at a night stand in the bedroom and no it wasn't there before it only appears after i'd better leave a note for her anyway she's sick and i'm the only one who can help her i'll remind her of tomorrow's appointment with the psychiatrist you know what's weird about all this she's still right out there in the living room dude could just walk over there and talk to her but i'm pretty sure this is why his relationship's falling apart communication problems it's all on this guy he just needs to learn to talk Well, talk about remarkable penmanship. My dear wife, I apologize for last night. Again, she's right outside. You can do that to her face. Pardon me, please. Please believe that I want you to be at peace. Again, very vague and not really effective communication. Do not forget to vis I the psychologist. Dot, dot, dot. All right. Well, you misspelled visit there, so hey, at least you're trying. I'd better get some rest. I am so busy tomorrow. And on that note, so ends part two of my over-analysis of dark years. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone between, I do hope you stay around for part three. Because folks, it features a mandatory stealth section. It has to be seen to be believed, folks. So I hope you stick around and see it with me. Alright, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between.